fresh out of bed. How you doing? Everybody good? Got my uh, vintage Maxwell House cup. You know, that's an old Larry trick right there. Um, Larry's been using that trick for years. Uh, there's a lot of soul in uh, chords when you got two chords back and forth. Up and down a whole step. Let's just say you pick a C or, or a D, right? Do it in any, any key, right? There's been many, 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 many a session where, where Uncle Larry has... Um, here's what I do. I've been on sessions my whole life with people from all over the world, right? You get a room full of guys that have never met, never played before. But music is the great connector, right? You guys could barely speak the language, but once four or five dudes put on headphones, start playing music together, it's like this, you know, instant language that no matter where you're from, you speak it. So like on a session, I'm playing with cats I've never played with before. Um, I will do this thing where like everyone's got kind of got sounds and they all went back in the control room and then I'll be the last guy getting sounds and I'll just start playing a, a progression like that. Two chords, you know. Start playing that over and over. Every time, without fail, each musician will slowly filter out. Maybe the bass player will come out and he'll start, you know, noodling around. Everybody loves that progression. No matter where you're from, people feel that. Start bass player will start noodling along, and all of a sudden the drummer shows up, you know, and then before anybody's even played a song that we're actually supposed to play on the session, we've already grooved together. You know, everybody comes out, gets their and the engineers love it because <clears throat> they get a sound up, you know. They can hear the whole band as a as a, as an ensemble playing together, and uh, you know that's a very soulful kind of vibe to get started with. Uh, session, I do that a lot. Hundreds of times I've pulled that gag, and it always works. Uh, no one's ever going to go. Well, that's that's a that's a bad sounding progression. People always love that one, so you can use that too. <clears throat> Just make sure you think about Uncle Larry when you do that. It's not the only time you should think about Uncle Larry. You should think about Uncle Larry when you're doing other things, too. I mean, we've been through so much together. Three years, right? Um, man, I got lots of stuff for you. Lots of thank yous today. <clears throat> I want to say thank you to this guy named... Uh, what the hell is this guy's name? This fella named Dan something. Dan Mabon, M-A-B-O-N, sent a couple of t-shirts that he had made that don't fit me, but they're very sweet. He's got, you know, he sent these t-shirts. What a sweet guy. Thank you, dude. You didn't have to do that. I also wanted to say thank you to uh, my old buddy, Lidor. Uh, you can't see it back there because of the blinding light. But do you see that sign that's blinking, changing colors? He had that made for me. It says Yingling Homeschooling on it. And it's one of those fiber optic lights where you can change the color. It's super rad. Thank you, dude. Lidor is, is my number one student out there, by, by the way, guys. He's been with me since the beginning. He's the class, he's the teacher's pet, as they say. He studies the hardest, knows every episode. Uh, he came here from some crazy country. His name is Lidor, blah, 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 blah. and I said, dude, you need a rock name. So I named him Leo Ellis, and he said, fucking cool, man, I like that name. So that's what he is now. Leo Ellis, he's not the first guy I named, but he's got a proper rock name now and he likes it. So, and he's a great guitar player, so find him out there. If you need a young, strapping guitar man, find Leo Ellis. So, uh, I also wanna say thank you to Craig Snyder. Remember the guy that sent all the really cool um, Cornish stuff? Thank you, dude. These people don't have to be so kind. Uncle Larry appreciates the, the generosity and all the people that have sent the sweet PayPal's. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you to Kathy Wilson, who has sent so many kids' toys that if she sends one more, she's in big trouble. Uh, the kids have got plenty of toys now, Kathy. We can calm down. Thank you so much. You're very kind. Um, also uh, to Robert Keeley. 
the guy that makes the amazing pedals. He, I met him a couple weeks back over at Brett Pava's house. We had a little hang and uh, he brought some pedals for the fellas to try out. And I was immediately strucken, stricken, struck by how sweet of a guy Robert Keeley is. I feel like I've known him forever. Super nice cat. Uh, lovely guy, brought all these pedals and gave me a few things to try and they all sounded great, you know. You know, I, I went to dinner the other night with a couple of friends. We were all sitting around and they're all guitar nerds. And uh, inevitably, after we avoided talking about guitar for about an hour and a half, like any guitar player hang should, finally we started talking about guitar at the end of it. Um, Talking about pedals, I said to, said to these younger fellas, "What's some good pedals you've tried out lately?" You know, I always had sort of per perfunctory ask that question just to act interested. And uh, uh, truth is, I'm totally just oversaturated by the entire pedal situation. I feel like the option anxiety involved in choosing a pedal today is is reached an all time epic high that no one will ever recover from 1500 somebody told me there's 1500 active pedal making companies all making stuff at this point everything sounds like everything it's hard to tell anything apart and at this point my whole thought is man sure i've got some shit that i could use that i use that it sounds really good to me that i've used for a long time but i could literally just call a guy like robert keely and say robert you're a nice guy i really like you why don't we just make a pedal board of all your shit? And I could I could use that. I mean, I might as well just find your friends like Barry at XTS and all those guys that have been great to me all these years. Just make a pedal board out of all that shit. I mean, who cares? I mean, they're your friends. You might as well stick up for them, right? And um, life's too short to use some pedal made by some guy's dick. But I don't really know who that is, but might as well just pick your, your buddies at this point, you know, same thing with, with all your gear, you know, it's like, I, I love to use that Ebo reverb, not because it's the, it's the, you know, it's like, it's, yes, it is for sure the best sounding reverb I've ever heard, you know, but there's other stuff that I could buy, but why not buy the one that sounds the best that's also made by your dear friend, you know, all my buddies, Skank, Nick Druschel, Greg Voros, and all these guys that do really cool things to help me out. Andy Jellison. I mean, I want to work with them guys, you know, make, like make a team, you know. So that's the way to do it. Um, find your buddies, do it that way, right? Um, you know, Evo makes those incredible amps. Skank makes the nice amps. You got, you got, you know, there's stuff all around. The guys at Duesenberg have been great to me. I play those guitars, um, make it a family affair, right? That kind of thing. Um, let's see, uh, a few things and, uh, oh, do you guys, I wanted to say goodbye to Donnie Baker. I was a big fan, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys all know Donnie Baker out there, but he's a hilarious comedian that died recently. Um, he, uh, the first time I ever found out about Donnie Baker was when uh, I saw a video that he posted about seven years ago where he was talking about Axl Rose joining the ACDC. You ever seen that? If you've never seen that, I'll post it in the link in the video. You've got to see it, man. It is fucking hilarious. But he was great. He'll be missed. Um, let's see. Hi, hey, a few things from the VCB. Hey, Tom, how was that Boston gig? Oh, it was awesome. Uh, playing with Jimmy Ursay at the uh, Boston Garden, or the Garden, and uh, we had a blast, man. It was really great to hang out with Duke Levine and Peter Wolf. We had such a good time. Vince Gill was there. We, we rode together on the plane, get there. It was awesome. Ebo rode home with us on the plane. We had a good time. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I've, I've been friends with Duke for a long time, but we never really, you know, we only hung out one time in Nashville years ago, but we got to hang a good bit on that gig. Um, two older dudes with the same Western shirt, both holding tellies, standing next to each other. Uh, except he's better looking than me. And uh, man, what a great guy, great guitar player. I'm a huge fan, always have been. Peter Wolf was amazing. 
77 years old and still running around the stage like he's tw like he's 20. I mean, doing the drop into his knees like James Brown and shit, age 77, it's amazing. He has zero body fat. He looks like a twig. It's amazing. Um, sweet guy, too. Very cool guy. Um, Lord, I'll bet anybody who's lucky enough to see that boy tear a house down in about 1977 when he was in his 20s was really, really enjoying that because he could bring it. I mean, hell, what a force. Uh, I, Tom, you say you've been selling a lot of gear lately. Um uh, what are you looking, are you, are you buying something else? The guy said, well, you know, not really. I'm just, I've been selling off a lot of stuff. I got too much shit, man. Um, that L, that little L double O sold and I sold a bunch of tweeds and stuff. I got a few things left. I got, I might sell that Epiphone, uh, amp, amp I got that you guys saw a while back and maybe my Ampeg, um, super, uh, super echo twin. I might sell that. Um, but and people said, what are you looking to buy? I'm not really looking to buy anything anymore, but I do, but that excludes old Marshalls. Old Marshalls aren't, that's not, I don't consider that gear. That's like, I just buy every old Marshall that's original that I can find. I always have. So if anybody's got any cool old Marshall stuff out there, always tell me, cause I'll buy it. I love old Marshall shit and I buy it anytime I can. Um, you know, late 60s, uh, that type of thing. Not not the 70s stuff. Um, so, uh, another guy said, uh, uh, what's that say? Um, oh, you know what I was gonna tell you? Uh, there's, a really, there's a couple really cool places out. Me and Skank went looking at old cars yesterday. There's a couple places out in sort of like Laverne, Smyrna area, east of town, where they have uh, these warehouses full of really cool old cars. Skank's a big motorhead, as you guys know. Um, and he, to the point where he power tooled his finger off so he can't play guitar anymore. But that boy knows how to fix cars and we were looking at a bunch of cool old cars. Man, we looked at hundreds of really rad old cars, but I found one that really spoke to me. I made an, actually made an offer on it, so we'll see what happens. Wasn't, it wasn't like crazy expensive or anything like that, but it was, man, I found a nice car. Uh, I'll sh if it happens, I'll show it to you, if it ends up working out. Um, but that's it. Uh, here's an old telly I got a while back. This is a 61. Came from, apparently, from the original owner from up in Canada. Fine guitar, man. Uh, it's going through the process of being bucified, which, as you well know, requires new frets, new nut. Got that done. Now the last thing, I just need to put some good saddles on there. Um, these old original threaded saddles, they don't make it, man. <clears throat> you can tell the string is not... It ain't doing the thing. It's supposed to do... So I ordered some of those uh, Callahan uh, stainless steel compensated. Those are great. See, that, that shit will go right away. And, and uh, you get, then you'll have the bong, you know, the big bong. These old threaded cells are cool looking and everything, but man, they present a whole myriad of problems. But this is a great guitar, super lightweight, amazing neck. Uh, 61, see, the, all those guys out there that collect vintage guitars are into this shit. There's a there's a funny thing that happened with Telecasters in the early '60s. Um, see, they made a shit ton of Tellys and Strats throughout the '50s in the Maple Neck era, Maple Board. There was a hardly rare would you call an old Telly or a Strat from the '50s. I mean, they were like the PV of the day. He was cranking out a lot of guitars. So '50s Strats and Tellys are, are very plentiful, right? And then in late 59, when um, when they switched over to the Rosewood board, they seemed like they focused more on strats than they did on tellies. You'll see, you know, dozens of 60, 61, 62 Stratocasters, but you'll hardly ever see any 60, 61, 62, 63, or 4 tellies. 
they're very low production. So anytime you find a, a early 60s telly, that's a pretty rare thing to begin with because, you know, this they just were low production numbers. You know, they were more focused on the strats at that time. 62 strat is hardly rare, but a 62 telly is hard to find, man, that's for sure. <laughs> And then right around uh, 65, they started cranking up tellies again. So there's plenty of those, 65 and onward, you'll see lots of tellies. But there was that four-year period there where you don't see many. This is a slab board, you know, nice big old chunk of Brazilian there. Cool guitar, man. The original case with all the candy and everything. super low and it's already cooking like that i might jack it up just a teach see what it does but when i was doing that stuff earlier in this video it's i was using the, the base cap you know the original old tellies have that that crazy wiring where you got on the bridge on the bridge setting you, you got the bridge pickup in the middle, in the middle you got the neck And then on the, on the uh, what you would consider to be the neck position, it goes to this, the mud cap. Which is kind of weird and not very, very usable unless you're playing bass to a loop you just made. cats hope you have a great day today take it easy out there um try to stay cool it's pretty hot all right peace out guys bye-bye